These are sectors where we <coughs> excel as a nation and are acknowledged as uh, global leaders. They're endorsed by the UK government and they're in keeping with the city regions and economic action plan. We're confident uh, that they shouldn't be too negatively affected uh, by the impact of Brexit. And these sectors are cybersecurity, compound semiconductors and creative industries, in particular quality film and TV. And it's been challenging uh, to develop a new international strategy during a period of significant upheaval. And uh, an extent, to an extent, there's still a great deal of uncertainty. So there's never a right time to develop an international strategy. Of course, relationships continually change, economies fluctuate, and priorities move on. So we will be uh, flexible in our approach whilst holding true to the values that are contained in the strategy. So key to what we do next will be what our trading relationship will be with the European Union and also with the rest of the world. And we will work constructively with the UK government to make sure that we get the best possible deal for Wales and its economy. So also question our strategy and our new um, you talked about changing the image of Wales to be seen as modern and vibrant. I just wondered if you've done any research on what the current perception is of Wales abroad. We have. We've done quite a lot of, of research, in particular when it comes to uh, business investment. What is it that, that puts people off uh, investing in Wales? And there's a perception sometimes that we're a long way, for example, from, from London. And that's why if you, you look at the way we promote Wales as a place to invest, we're very keen to underline the fact that we're only two hours uh, away from London and the connectivity and things are, are improving all the time, that there are links in particular into North Wales uh, and, and good networks available there. So, so we have done uh, quite a lot of, um, of work on what, what is the perception of Wales externally and, and how is it we want to, um, to, to address that issue. Uh, and I think what we've got to recognise is that this is a crowded field. Everybody's competing to, for attention. So how do you get the attention? How do we stand out in the crowd? Uh, and that's why um, it, I think it's really important that what we're doing is giving leadership, uh, not just to, to people who are selling the story of Wales, but also to, to the UK government and to other agencies who are working on our behalf to give them a, a, a clear uh, book from which to work in terms of what we think will draw attention to our country uh, internationally in a positive way. Clearly, when, you, when you're developing a, an international strategy at this time, you're clearly confined by what's happening in terms of Brexit and a, and a trade agreement, uh, upcoming talks over a trade agreement with the EU. So, I mean, given that, how limited have you been in the work that you can do, knowing that there are all sorts of factors beyond your control that will ultimately limits what you're able to achieve? But we recognise that international relations, uh, on the whole, is something that is not devolved, that, that it's the UK government that takes a lead. But that's not to say that there are not opportunities for us to be making sure that we fly the flag for Wales. And in making this appointment for First Minister, we're very keen to send out a signal that whilst uh, we uh, ha are about to leave the European Union, it's clear that we want to continue to, to engage internationally and in particular with the European Union. And that's, I hope, made very clearly uh, underlined in, in the uh, strategy as it's set out. You can't get away from the fact that 60% of our trade is in goods is with the European Union. And for us to uh, jeopardise that in any way would be extremely damaging to our economy. On that note, what are the challenges when you're kind of working within those devolution confines? Um, so I think there are opportunities. Uh, so we have 21 offices around the world where we're able to uh, speak directly to people. Uh, the confines are, are that there are lots of places where we don't have representation, and that's why we have to rely then on the UK government to, to speak on our behalf. Uh, and that's why making sure that they are saying the kind of things that, that we would like them to say is really important. That's when we've worked with them, we've made sure that they had sight uh, of this international strategy as it's been developing. 
we've tested out the three sectors that we're anxious to come up with them. Uh, so we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. So you know, I, I, I know we see this as competition with the UK government. I think there's an opportunity for us to develop, but also to make sure that we're getting our 5%. You know, we, uh, we represent 5% of the United Kingdom. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, they are representing us. And there are other British institutions where we'll be making sure and pushing them in terms of representation. So the British Council, uh, World Service, there are other organisations where we have to make sure that we, we are being presented uh, as a part of the United Kingdom. You mentioned connectivity. Um, Flyby is really important to Cardiff Airport. Do you support the idea Flybys in Trouble? Do you support the idea mooted by the um, uh, mooted in the press this morning that the UK government might get rid of air passenger duty on domestic flights? Well, we're obviously very concerned about the situation with Flyby. It's a uh, fundamental importance to uh, Cardiff Airport. Uh, we have long uh, suggested that we would like to see devolution of power of air passenger duty uh, to Wales, in particular for long haul flights. Uh, we will be assessing uh, what the UK government comes up with uh, in terms of uh, whether they will be uh, suggesting uh, uh, some kind of subsidy in relation to uh, air passenger duty for domestic flights. Connectivity is crucial in terms of, of regionalism, and it's good to see at last that the UK government is taking this on board and recognising that they have a responsibility beyond London. Well, I think about to sort of the central part of that, so just the layout from Fed. Taking team on my Cymru, I didn't be a mixed the layout from Wales to Um I think it's not both both and lay with you. I think both now. Did you know why to me? I think I'm not quite aware, but then I point to Scotland. That's clear. Car and I. Um, a double gyd uh, traglen ag yfyr diaspora. Uh, mae pob ma, ma, ma werf o'r er enghraifft gyda rhaglen uh, eitha double gyd ag ar y diaspora, yn hyfyd gyda yr Alban. Wel, well, mae gwaith gyda mi'n neud am hynny, ac yn ei eisoes wedi dechrau ar y gwaith yna. Felly, yn amlwg mewn rhai meisydd, uh, mae lot fwy o waith yn ei wneud o ran codi'n uh, golygol ni, o ran codi'n delwedd ni ar draws y byd. Um, and in the way that you need him, 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 in the way yeah <coughs> Why do you wish your Vina on the three short rides on San Stefan? Um, are um, that blood is um, a vach that Europea is Nissan of the Carpet India? A Taki Mini would have found or a travel in Stanina? Well, I could have rather Genny Joss Masnach and so on as Camry, I could have got Vishon and Jordan Rob with Quisignal, but for so on as Pruden and Camry. Uh, Arni, uh, five foot high, did that bloody um, press on us now with our jobs to be. Um, Bethany, where he bun brood on Danny, you he second high foot to watch for Dan and Diaz, but could have bothered good on you in heaven. A dross may sit in our Benny, uh, Slim on my hub, bothered good on you in Dustin on Eddig, and I might just add it, um, am I dross, uh, Avisk, dross Yachid, Ag, uh, Amy, where he bun Gusty also water at Cumbri. I Pryden, i ddod lan, a, a strwythau sydd yn caniatau i ni, cael yn llais ni, uh, wedi chlywed yn glir, cyn bod y trafodaethau yn dechrau, yn sicr, ond wrth bod y tra trafodaethau hefyd yn datblygu. Ni dal yn aros y glywed wrth y wodras Pryden, prif fydd y strwythau yna yn cael ei ddoi mewn lle. O ran y, y negeseion i'n bwmplywed, um, dwi'n meddwl bod diddordeb gyda ni'n weld hynny digwydd, 
and my friend's been into car, I saw her first one and I'd have to really stop you. And you went to go and go to some galas and that bloody pepper and ass, positive, and uh, Adi Lado, good uh, um, a Gwyn's of Mass Nack, he said, I've got to try some Thai pear. This is very much a change in tone from the Welsh government. So we've been going to <coughs> Brexit now. It appears that you look to take the benefits of Brexit, as some would say, by international trade. What? Why is that? Well, I think we've got to be absolutely clear that we still uh, have yet to see where this is going to end up. Uh, if we get a bad deal with the European Union, and let's not forget that no deal is still not off the table in the uh, at the bill that's going through Parliament at the moment, then, then we've got to be sure that that's not going to be damaging to Wales. So, of course, we've got to make sure that our interest is in keeping as close a relationship as we possibly can have with the European Union. We uh, know that it's not just about tariffs, it's also about non-tariff barriers. Uh, it's about making sure that uh, access for our goods uh, are, are, are as, as easy as possible. Um, and that is really important and significant when 60% of our goods are through the EU. So um, our prime, primary priority will be in making sure that we have a strong relationship <coughs> with you, but that's not to say that there won't be opportunities for us to develop relationships with other countries as well. We've been carrying an eye on that as well. You must forget that you know, the UK government have not negotiated a trade deal in 40 years. This is very, very new for them. Um, and, and so... Uh, you know, we, we, this is not going to be easy. I think people, if people think Brexit is going to be done uh, in two weeks' time, they, they need to think again. Has it been difficult for the UK government, sorry, the Welsh government, to accept the Brexit as a reality? I, I think, uh, of course, I mean, we've, it's been very clear that, that as a Welsh government, we, we think that there's potential to do great damage to our economy. But I think we are now accepting that Brexit will happen, and therefore... Uh, as uh, we, we need to be constructive in the way that we engage with the next stage of the process. The next stage of the process is making sure we get the poss best possible deal where, uh, if we can, we get regulatory equivalence with the uh, EU uh, it, as, as we have at the moment. The last thing we want to see is any downgrading in terms of um, our uh, standards uh, for the environment, for protection for workers um, and for consumers. It's been reported today as well that one of the policies that you're looking to introduce is to teach uh, Welsh children Mandarin. Do you want to uh, expand on that a little bit? Well, I think w one of the things that I was keen to do, uh, this is more or less is a, a five-year strategy, but I wanted to make sure that we also had a vision for the future, just uh, to, to make sure that we understood that the axis of economic activity in the next 20 years is likely to shift to Asia. Uh, and so it is important for us to keep an eye on that. That's not something that you can switch on in 20 years' time when that will become a more of a, a reality for our nation. And that's why I think it's important for us to start putting in place measures to make sure we can engage uh, internationally, in particular with what will undoubtedly become the biggest market in the world. Um, we have, uh, there, are, there, are, there are issues with this, obviously we need to find Mandarin teachers, uh, but we've assessed and spoken to Aberystwyth University, uh, Bangor University has a uh, uh, as a Confucius centres where uh, we will be able to tap into the expertise there and hopefully uh, try and develop some of the skills, in particular some of those areas where we may like to see tourism develop uh, in the long term in the future. Welsh children struggle to learn their own language at the moment as well as other, other modern foreign languages which are comparatively a lot easier to learn than Mandarin. What makes you think that that will change in five years? Well, uh, uh, that, as I said, this is more of a, a longer-term uh, approach, and I think uh, what's important is, is that we have the opportunity for some people, we're not saying that everybody in Wales is going to have to learn Mandarin in any sense, uh, but, but there are opportunities for them where that expertise exists around those universities, for example, uh, that there are opportunities for, for some local uh, school children to, to start on that journey. You know, listen, we've got to be clear, Welsh students are as able as any other in the entire planet. And we've got to have a bit more confidence in our uh, pupils, I think, and, and get them to be inspired by what the future might look like. Do you uh, understand the frustration uh, of some of your Labour colleagues at the First Minister's response to the general election? 
Well, I think what happens in our group meetings should remain within our group meetings as, as, uh, as, as private discussions. Uh, obviously, you know, everybody has opinions about uh, the response to the general election. We'll see now in the next few months how things unfold in terms of the future of the party. Uh, we all have our different opinions.